In a recent op-ed, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry talked about the farm of the future, building upon the robust production ag traditions with advancements we've seen in precision agriculture and new options in small-scale production. Hi, I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. I talked to him about the perception of agriculture in Washington, D.C., and the important role that technology and advancements continue to play. No, we live in an amazing country in the sense that we have an extraordinary gift in our natural resources, the ingenuity of farmers and ranchers, our traditional land grant system that moved technology out of the science of the universities that's made us the most productive agricultural country in the world. And also, we take for granted that we have the lowest and most food prices in the world, the most diverse range of food. And in fact, we're so productive that it allows us to meet our charitable impulse and we give away about two billion dollars worth of food overseas and this is essential for diplomacy as well as our national security so agriculture plays a key role in the in not only the economic well-being of america but also international stability and our own national security and so the whole idea of the farm of the future is to continue this tradition and project forward as to how we integrate better uses of technology to enhance productivity reduce inputs protect soil health and the environment, and expand the agricultural family. So this is why it's a particularly exciting time to view uh, agriculture through the lens of what is the farm of the future. It is pretty exciting to see the advancements that we see, for example, with ARS and UNL uh, coming together at Innovation Campus to really strengthen the agriculture in the U.S. We've worked very hard for a a very long time to try to align our traditional land-grant institution with emerging opportunity coming out of the federal government to ensure that our resources actually enhance productivity and profitability for farmers, and at the same time, using big data, which tends to be in the hands of private companies, as a public tool by which there can be sharing of the best practices using innovation and technology, again, to enhance profitability and and enhance uh, productivity, while at the same time looking at new emerging markets that can actually create value adds and expand the agricultural family, even in the small stakeholder farmers. This is the way of the future. Again, agriculture is an entrepreneurial space, and the backbone of it is production ag and using innovation and technology to enhance precision agriculture combined with big data, is going to yield increasingly increased profitability and good soil health. But it's also going to expand entrepreneurial opportunity in the rural in our rural communities. And that's what's so exciting about this. So we work very hard to move federal funding into the establishment of the new Agricultural Research Service building at the University of Nebraska, positioning us as Nebraska again to lead in this sector for America, but also the world. When we look what's happening with Russia and Ukraine and how it's affecting not only our markets here, but the profitability and the utilization of of fertilizer to grow these crops into this next growing season. Yes. um, Look, no one wants to see what is potentially going to happen uh, in Ukraine with a Russian invasion. Uh, They've mounted about 70 percent of the capacity they would need for a full scale land invasion. So it's not only distressing it you got to take a step back and understand what's happening here and look at this through the lens of the last three decades to fully understand where we are. After the Soviet Union fell, I think the United States as well as the rest of the world missed a huge opportunity to to try to move from mutually assured destruction to mutually assured security. And that would have taken a lot more investments in sort of a conversion and transition of the the Russian economy and the Russian political system while respecting their own uh, culture and, and perspectives. And so we let that drift for a long time. So move fast forward to, to the Sochi Olympics. You might remember that eight years ago. Russia showcased its capacity on the world stage. They put on a fresh, modern face. And I thought it was an amazing set of Olympics and how they pulled it off. And then moments after that, they invaded Ukraine and took Crimea and some other areas. So um, Ukraine is a sensitive subject in that it's sort of the bridge between uh, East and West, uh, between Russia and Europe. Uh, the Ukrainians and portions of it obviously inclined toward toward European ways, other areas inclined toward Russian ways. So, uh, but the disruptions that can occur, you're exactly right, in uh, energy capacity, 
as it relates to inputs for farmers is very real. This shows you the interconnectivity of our world now. Looking at China, how much of an effect are you seeing with what's going on with them? And we've got the Olympics taking place. Well, again, in order to understand where we are in the moment, we have to go back 20 years where certain multinational uh, corporate interests made the case that uh, opening China up to free trade policies uh, would benefit all peoples. And the effect of that was American manufacturing moved there. Uh, they pollute the environment. They have lax labor standards. Uh, they have a form of government, which is this strange hybrid capitalistic communistic model. Their sort of reason for being is what I call economic nationalism. And so the irony is they now make the stuff. We buy the stuff. They have our cash. We run up debt. They buy our debt. That is a shift of the wealth assets of America into the hands of the Chinese government, which then in turn builds up its military. So we'll spend tremendous amounts of resources make sure the, making sure the commercial shipping lanes are open. My conversation with Congressman Jeff Fortenberry. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network.